Hello, I'm Heather Hitchens, president of the American Theatre Wing. Welcome to Masterclass. For more than a century, the Wing has advanced the art form of theatre by investing in brave work, supporting creativity, and creating pathways into the industry for young, aspiring theatre makers, both on stage and off. Our Masterclass series provides you, our participants, with the opportunity to learn directly from masters of our industry. No two paths are alike, and I think you'll find each guest's experience is rich with information uniquely useful to you as you chart your own course in the American theater. Thank you for joining us and please enjoy. Hello everyone and welcome to the American Theater Wing's Masterclass. My name is Jenny Gorlick and I am the staff producer here at The Wing. And I am so thrilled that you could join us for the first of our new series of interactive live streamed masterclasses. Tonight's class is on writing from yourself and it will feature four incredible artist participants and graduates of the American Theater Wing's various programs. They've each composed an original song that they've written from their personal experience. And at the end of the class, we will have time for a question and answer session. So if at any point you have a question that comes to you, please feel free to submit it in the comments and we will get to it at the end. And without further ado, I am so honored to introduce tonight's teacher. He's a Pulitzer Prize and Obie Award-winning playwright, composer, and lyricist. Everyone, please welcome the wonderful Michael R. Jackson. Hi, Michael. Hi, Jenny. How are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing so well, thank you. I'm so excited about this new format. I'm thrilled that you could be our first guest. Uh, you're amazing, and I think everyone in the comments is so excited to hear from you. Well, I'm happy to be here. Incredible. So um, before we get into the class, I know that your amazing musical, A Strange Loop, that won the Pulitzer and also many New York Drama Critics Circles Awards. Um, it was so moving and wonderful, and you've written it through personal experience. So I wanted to ask you, have you always been able to write so personally and intimately, or was that something that you learned over time? Um, I definitely would say that I uh, have always written personally, but it's certainly because I would say a lot of my first writing was jur literally journal entries. Okay. Um, because, you know, that was seemed to be the place where I could really sort of say what was on my mind because I was kind of a very sensitive kid. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, I just couldn't always express myself in the way I wanted to. And the place where I could felt I could really do that was in our, our journal. And then that ended up translating itself into like fiction and poetry that I was starting to write. And then I just sort of kept doing it and I kept being encouraged by teachers to keep doing that. And so it just became a part of my natural writing process. That's amazing. And when would you say you started um, taking your journal entries and making them into songs? Um, well, I started writing poetry probably mm -hmm. and I would say when I was like 12, or 13, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Um, I was a child actor and then I sort of transitioned into writing. And those poems also were, you know, I wrote hand in hand with fiction as well. Mm -hmm. And I used to try to write songs, um, but I didn't understand song form itself because mm -hmm. I just thought songs were just kind of like poems, which they can be, but without knowing the form, you don't kind of are like a ship without a sail. And so right. I kind of stopped trying to do that, but I was always making up little musical tunes. And so then once I went to grad school specifically to study book writing and lyric writing, mm -hmm. then I began to understand song form and the musical impulses I had, had somewhere to go. Amazing. And in terms of song form, aside from being sometimes poems, is there a structure that is typical for songs? I'm Yeah, I mean, the most typical song forms are gonna be verse chorus. That's mm -hmm. what most people know, you know, from pop music, but also musical theater. And also AABA is another song form. And there's lots of permutations of that, um, that one can do. And not to mention, you know, just different forms you can work in, whether it's like opera or jazz or classical or whatever. So. Um, but those song forms are, tend to be the, the main ones that people use. Got it. So if, if you're someone who is just starting out 
knows that they have songs in them, but they don't really know where to begin. And they're interested in writing from their personal experience. Do you have any tips or tricks for how to get started? You know, it's it's tricky because you kind of uh, part because part of the the part of the part of the trick of writing pers personal songs is to have an impulse to go there with yourself mm -hmm. and to be honest and transparent about writing from personal experience. But at the same time, there's also just a general craft to songwriting. So marrying craft to a personal expression and understanding that even when you're writing from yourself, it still is a kind of fiction. Mm -hmm. So like those are three big things to kind of juggle. But I, I would say the thing that's key is a willingness and a desire to be transparent about what one uh, wants to express. Got it. So if you're coming from a place of this is what I need to say, how do you then get into that technical aspect of learning song form? Is that only something from school or? Well, that school was like very uh, crucial for me, but mm -hmm. I would not say that one has to go to school in order to uh, learn how to uh, write song, figure out song form. You, you can study, you can just sort of pick up and you can look up lyrics. You can, you can search, you know, verse, chorus, AABA, you can study, like you can really look at how the masters do it and like under, mm -hmm. and just begin to like analyze um, how they put a song together. Um, and that's, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna take a lot of work and a lot of thought and a lot of trial and error, but mm -hmm. you can sort of teach yourself and you can read books about it. There's, there's certainly ways, but it's always gonna be about doing it, doing it and doing it and doing it and writing and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting and, and trying to, hone your, literally hone your craft. Right, would you say that your first songs, I mean, cause your musical made me cry. I'm sure it made all of us cry, we loved it. But your first songs when you were first starting out, would you say, I mean, what was the level there? Like when did it start to get to be something that was good, that you felt proud of? Well, in my case, what ended up happening was, so I guess, here's the thing. So like I would say technically, my first songs were the ones that I was trying to write when I was like in high school, middle school, mm -hmm. high school, right? And those songs, I don't think that they were good, mm -hmm. but they were true. Right. And I wasn't judging myself at all. And so when I go back to, I still find some of those songs in old journals and stuff. And when I look at them, I just feel like I was, willing to try anything. Mm -hmm. Because I also at that time was very much imitating my favorite songwriter at the time and still to this day, Tori Amos. <laughs> okay. so, like, so like a lot of, of my writing in those days was just purely about imitation and mm -hmm. exploration. And I think that that's a wonderful phase to go through um, as you're just trying to find your own voice. And then the first like song song that I wrote that was music and lyrics actually was memory song from A Strange Loop. Wow. I wrote that when I was in school. It was just a standalone mm -hmm. song that I just wrote just for me. And I was encouraged by my teachers to continue writing my own music after I presented that song in class because um, it was just a special assignment that they had given if you were a lyricist who had never written music and wanted to try it. Mm -hmm. So if that had not happened, there probably oh would not be any A Strange Loop because no one would have encouraged me to continue writing my mm -hmm. own music. Cause it was just something I did on a kind of on a, just because the assignment was there. That's amazing. So in that well, regard, school was very helpful for me because mm -hmm. the NYU program was like a, a, a hub where I felt safe to, to try mm -hmm. anything artistically and try and fail and start over and rewrite. And, and that, and so that for me, that was exactly what I needed. But again, that's not for everyone. No, but that's amazing. And what would we have done without a strange loop? What would we have done? <laughs> I don't know what I would have oh, done. A strange loop helped me through quite a lot of things. So, yeah. So it's amazing. So I'm hearing starting from imitation is maybe a great place to begin, and then using your honest truth and trying and trying and trying and keep going, which I think is 
being brave yeah. and, is, sharing, is and sharing with other people as well mm-hmm. and getting feedback and and again rewriting i cannot stress you know enough how important rewriting is to any kind of songwriting but the but also that's like once you're transparent about what you want to express you have to be willing to be also not hard on yourself but mm-hmm. dedicated to the truth of the song like there's mm-hmm. there's that thing of like it's true to you and it's like my story but it's mm-hmm. also once you give it over to the song it there's it becomes another kind of truth and that's a balance so like even with a strange loop i always tell people it's not an autobiog- autobiography mm-hmm. but it's emotionally true i have felt mm-hmm. everything that usher felt and so it's not and so i but those songs came from me like i right. felt i experienced a lot of things and i wrote those songs but there was a, there is a space between what autobiographically happened to me and what mm-hmm. usher went goes through and what right. those songs are so you you have to you start to find an objectivity between you know your experience and what the song is but it's that makes it no less true you know it's a de- yes. it's a it's a balance yes of taking something that's so personal and honest and then also making it theatrical it's and art. musical it's art, it's art. It's, yeah that's amazing. I think this is an incredible place to get into the interactive portion of our masterclass, especially when we're talking about the importance of rewriting, because we mm-hmm. have four incredible, talented student participants who have all graduated from different American Theatre Wing programs who have written an original song today that Michael has seen. And we're gonna play them for all of you now from wherever you are in the world. It's amazing to see we have San Francisco, Arizona, Los Angeles, New York in attendance. So thank you all for being here. And I'm really excited to introduce our first artist participant. Her name is Soleil Singh, and she is a 2020 Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge winner and studying at Yale University. So let me pop in Soleil, hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing great, how are you? So good. So happy that everyone gets to hear your song. So if you don't mind giving us a little bit of an introduction to the song and why you wrote it. Of course. So I wrote Mirror Says about the simple thing of looking into a mirror and truly letting that get to you, especially nowadays with social media and growing up with definitely an environment in which kids tend to judge themselves a lot. It was just about like looking into the mirror and letting it get to you, but then slowly but surely realizing, and this is super cheesy, but the fact that it is on the inside that is what matters most. Gorgeous. Okay, so I'm gonna share it now with everyone viewing and I'm gonna pop out and then you'll have a conversation about it. So this is Soleil's song, Mirror Sets.
better than this past When I felt all the fear And I made myself alone And I Thank you everyone for your sweet comments. Thank you. Um, that was really wonderful, Soleil. Um, you have an incredible voice and your piano skills are so sick. I love listening to, to you <laughs> to sing and play. It just, it's just very um, haunting. Um, so I <laughs> normally, so normally when I sort of get feedback, I I, tend, I don't, I, was, I always say that I don't like to do what I call drive-bys. So I like to sort of have like a conversation. So. I would like to know from you, sort of, how do you like your feedback? Is there anything that you want to know um, uh, or that you're thinking about or what do you want to tell me about the song? Um, and then we can sort of take it from there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so specifically, I wrote it in the sense that I was talking to a mirror and it was it was kind of difficult when writing it to shift back and forth and get that message across. So I guess like throughout the song and the journey, how much of a journey do you think that you can like fit into a song? And at what point is it like fitting too much? If that makes sense. Right. Yeah, so that's a really good question. I think that it, it truly depends on the journey that you as a songwriter want to take us. So like, we'll go along with you. We Maybe we'll go along with you for three minutes if that's what you want, or maybe we'll go along with you for five or seven or longer. There's some people have written quite long songs. So it sort of depends on you as a songwriter, like what's the story, what's the arc, where do we start, where do we end? What is the sort of peak in the middle, if there's one? Um, those are the sorts of things that you kind of want to think about when you're crafting your songs is like what's exactly the journey like if look if we're on a map and we're starting in michigan are we driving all the way to california or are we just going to chicago do you know what i mean mm -hmm. in that sense um so yeah. uh with that said uh this is some some things that i've thought about when i was listening to your song which is, again was quite beautiful um, I especially really loved the musical starkness of it that sort of you set up with that waltzing tempo. Um, and it's just, it has a very haunting quality to it that bring, really brings you in as a listener. And um, there's an intimacy to it, um, especially, and then especially when you add in your uh, vocal line, which is very conversational and kind of confessional, it seems, sounded to me. Um, I did want to know, uh, also before we jump in, like, is there anything about this? Is this is this a standalone song, or is it from a show? Or this is a standalone curtain? song. Okay. I okay. yeah, purely just. Yeah, great. So it it felt like it, it reminded me kind of of kind of like almost like a Fiona Apple kind of tune in a way. Um, Thank you. Like in the sound of it, so. <laughs> Uh, you're 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 in a strong tradition. Um, I think this is one thing I would encourage you to think about if you were going to work on a rewrite. Is and this is something that like uh, I think is important to personal songs is to be as specific as possible. And and especially because of the musical form that you're working in with that that sort of waltz, it that that music really focuses your ear in on exactly what's being said like it it it, it there's a it it has uh 
it sort of infused the song with like kind of uh, importance. Like it feels like something really um, secret or intimate is about to be revealed. And so in those cases, you wanna make sure that every line of your song is like really saying exactly what you wanted to say, that if you're setting up some sort of rhyme scheme or whatever the case may be, that you're really sort of going there. And so there were a couple of places just through the lyric that I wondered, you know, if there's potential to expand an idea or to be more descriptive or more personal or whatever. So like one example is the line about obsessing over clones. I like think I know what you mean when you say that in the song, but part of me, again, because of how the music is set up and the, the vocal lines, I sort of wondered like what it might be to uh, express that in terms that are m much more specific. Like who are the clones? What do they look like? Take us into the world of what this character who's singing these songs sees when she is comparing herself to other people. Um, and the mirror is sort of like where the ultimate judgment is. Uh, and I sort of felt watch, listening to the song that like there's an emphasis on the character of the mirror as kind of antagonist, um, which I think is a really interesting structure and in that you can use that in all kinds of ways um, to, to advance the story of your song and to have us end in a different place than we begin, uh, mm -hmm. if that's your goal. Um, so does anything, what I'm saying, does it resonate with you? Do you have any questions so far? Yes. No, completely. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I feel like definitely description for sure, especially in the chorus, because it's going to be repeated a lot. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so then, and then, so then there's like other lines similarly that I'm sort of, I'm like, with, you want to make sure that every line is saying exactly what you mean. I wondered things mm -hmm. like, what is, took some tax to keep you tall mean? I mean, I think I know what you mean. But given the the tight musical structure you've set, it's mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure that that if that line is moving us forward. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think I was struggling with, especially again when writing it, like shifting between the trying to talk to the mirror but making the mirror a person. So almost mm -hmm. like personifying the mirror into as if it was a character in the room. So I wasn't right. sure how to set up the fact that I was talking to a mirror without like kind of describing it. But if you have any ideas on, especially in the first verse, how that would work better, I would absolutely love that. Well, I think it's really clear that you're talking to the mirror. I don't have any questions mm -hmm. about that. I think it's just more like identifying kind of what the event in the song is. Yeah. Because um, if, you know, you're saying, uh, sorry, I have to pull the lyric up. I have it in front of me right here. It goes, mirror here on the wall, took some tacks to keep you tall. Mirror tells me what to wear. Mirror loves, oh, how you care. You say blue isn't right. Tuck it in, keep it tight. Look like those other girls, but today you'll be what, uh, be what you were. Mirror here through it all, hand, handle pain like plastic dolls, cover smiles over truth, mirror taught me not to lose. So like, so already like what I'm, I'm these, some of these details are really juicy, but because it, you're in this tight musical structure, it means every line counts, like really, really yeah. counts. And you don't wanna, you don't wanna tread water like ever. You want to always sort of be advancing. Um, and so I think like one thing that can be helpful in a song like this is to kind of do what's called a prose outline. And a prose outline is just when you literally just say what's happening in each uh, verse where you're like, this is like the idea that I'm trying to say here. Mm -hmm. And then here's the idea I'm trying to say here. And then when you do it that way, you can actually kind of see if you're advancing forward or if you're just kind of treading water. Um, and then uh, I also thought the, the sort of uh, chorus section had a lot of really beautiful musical passion to it. 
but I also got a little lost in the meaning there. And I felt like that was the place where, especially coming out of the, you know, this talking to the mirror, you want to really get incisive. Um, the verses mm -hmm. spend a lot of time reflecting on the mirror and what the mirror sees, but like, what, what did we see in the mirror? Like, who is the character who's singing the song? Don't be afraid mm -hmm. to get more personal and descriptive about the actual character singing um, and what yeah. they what they see. Like, do they see someone? And then I don't I don't um, want to be presumptuous and say that the song is like about you, Soleil. But if that <laughs> were the case, like, what does Soleil see in the mirror? You know, like, and that, and, it, and that might be a positive or negative thing, but that's sort of what I was mm -hmm. talking about to Jenny a little bit earlier about mm -hmm. being clear with yourself as the author of the song about how much you want to reveal about yeah. your, your own point of view. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're reflecting on yourself. Um, I know that like in A Strange Loop for me, which is a show that's about myself, it, I had to make a decision about just how much I was going to put out there. Um, and so you don't have to, you don't have to like tear your guts out if you don't want to, but if you're going to, then you, you do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you're yeah. not, then you have to set the terms of how much you want to reveal. Um, and so mm -hmm. I just musically, it felt like the B section was where I was wanting to really get more personal into this, mm -hmm. whatever the, the character sees when she looks in the mirror, perhaps. Um, and that was based, those are basically my thoughts on the song. Did you have any questions about that? Or do you think I'm crazy? Or is there anything? I know, I love, I love the prose idea. I've never even done that before. So I find that very, very interesting and so cool. And I definitely yeah, think just, that that's gonna, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a great tool that can, if you're, especially if you get stuck in like a, how, what the structure of your song is, it can be a really useful way to help you like just organize your thoughts. And then you can do the like lyrical work to like mm -hmm. say it the way that you want to say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how, I have a question about rewriting in general. How do you usually approach rewriting and how do you take it like line by line? Do you take it section by section or do you look at the whole of the song and then kind of nitpick? You know, it really depends on, you know, whether if it's a standalone song, it's truly going to be about the overall arc of the song. And like, just sort of, I normally do it, base, break it down section by section is normally how mm -hmm. I do it. But And sometimes that will mean that I have to move, like I'll, sometimes I often will find that my second verse really is my first verse or my last verse is my first verse, or my first verse is my last verse. And I just have to keep kind of looking at it and tr again, figuring out, am I saying what I mean? And do I mean what I say with every line and every section? If it's a, you know, a chorus song, a first chorus song, is my chorus really something that feels and sounds like it's something I want to come back to again and again? Or is my verse actually stronger than my chorus? And if so, then maybe I need to look at what my chorus is. Or maybe I love my chorus, but my verses are kind of hanging there like a limp noodle. So it's it's mm -hmm. it's kind of a process of of just like listening and being a little ruthless with yourself about the structure and whether mm -hmm. it's doing what you want it to do. And is it is it communicating very clearly? what you, the arc that you want to communicate. Awesome, thank you so, so much. Yeah, so that's so thank helpful. You. Oh, of course, um, thank you. Great, 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 great work. And I'm you. popping back in because this was amazing. Um, thank you so much, Soleil, for sharing your song with all of us. It's beautiful. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you, Michael, for this stellar feedback. I'm so excited as we continue on. Um, so thank you so much, Soleil, I'm going to, Say goodbye. Bye, Soleil. Bye, Soleil. <laughs> so our next student, this is truly incredible. I hope everyone is taking notes because I've learned so much. And now I'm feeling like I have the urge to write something. <laughs> 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 You're giving it to me right now, Michael. Um, so our next student is 
Alyssa Payne. She's a 2018 Andrew Lloyd Webber Initiative University Scholar and currently studying at Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. So I'm Alyssa, I'm gonna bring you in. Hi. Hey, y'all. How hey, are you hey. doing? Hey, I'm doing good, life's good. Oh, good. So if you don't mind just giving us a brief introduction to your song. Of course. So this song is called Something New, and I wrote it my first year of college. Um, and it was about me. I grew up in, in Bible Belt, Georgia. My dad's a music minister. I was up in Boston and Northern City, and uh, everyone around me was doing all these things. And, and you know, it's it's kind of fictional, but it's also, I remember feeling this need of like, you know, what, what does, what would it, Oh, like this. Uh, I also I mean, let me say this regret. I have a YouTube, and so sometimes when I write, I I put it in a location. So I kind of did like realistic fiction. This girl like in a frat house, and she's just trying to be like, these are all the things I want to do, but she doesn't really know what she's talking about or saying. She just wants to fit in and and find some friends. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> okay, amazing, perfect intro, and this is Alyssa's song. Um, Alyssa, the, tell us the title. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> this song is called Something New. Something New. Hey there, my name is Alyssa Payne, and this oh, is a song I wrote <laughs> freshman year of college called Something New. I spent the last four years going to church every Sunday, maintaining a good GPA, and never running late. I spent the last four years working hard and never partying. Instead, I was studying so I wouldn't procrastinate. Perfect attendance, independence is something I've always had. I never went through an emo phase or bleached hair fad. Is that you? Volunteering was appealing. It's what I spent every weekend doing. But now I'm in college as an undergrad. I want to do weed. I want to smoke alcohol. I want to go to a frat and lick somebody's face. I want to wear clothes that show off my knees. Why did I work to get straight A's when I could be getting D's? I want to get lit at parties, what? And participate in beer pong. Eat ice cream every morning out of a bong. I want to leave that AP wannabe girl behind. Watch rated R movies and drink non-communion wine. Cause I want to try something new. So come and tell me what to do and where to begin And I want to drink another beer While you come whisper in my ear And tell me right now, right here How to fit in I'm so sick of being single So I downloaded Grindr and Christian Mingle I met a lot of Cher fans and gays I want to get a misspelled face tattoo I want to know what it's like to finger you Even though I'm drunk, I still ask for consent uh, deep down I have this fear that I'm just getting lamer every year I don't want to die before giving a guy a hand career What? Hand job? I want to shoplift, get a hickey, join a band Go full out, Lindsay Lohan Be flirty, learn to talk dirty Feel like I'm being too wordy I want to try something new And I want to do it out with you So come and tell me what to do And where to begin And I want to drink another beer While you come bite my ear And tell me right now, right here How to in. You only die once you should live every day Don't want to waste another second just throwing my life away I want to try caffeine, stand be seen Change my bedtime to 9.15 and be I want to be happy I want to make a friend And for that I have to learn to fit in I would do anything just to be Anything but Miss Perfect, attendant, independent, always listening, but uninteresting, class president, always represent, never late, first to graduate, simple, basic, customary, average, normal, ordinary, sober, cis, never been kissed. I mean, what? I'm about to be twice. I've never kissed anybody. He caresses her face. They kiss. And then she throws up. Because she's drunk. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, that, you're so hilarious. Um, oh. 
do you, do you have any, how do you like your feedback? Is there anything you want to know or questions that you had about going into the four week mm -hmm. jump in? Um, not really. There is one question. A lot of times I write in like an AA format just because mm -hmm. I think music comedy for this character, I think it makes sense because it's like very uptight. So it'd be like these rhymes. Um, but sometimes I do wonder, is that annoying? Like, does it, <laughs> does it sound annoying when writing? Okay. That's a good place to start. Um, so I was so torn with this song because it's so funny and so and the rhymes and the the patter and the the character is just so alive in this that I like part of me feels like you know just leave it alone but then part of me is also like because because it's the character is so funny and there's so much character in this and so much um charm and relatability to it that I'm like I feel like there you do have some opportunities where you could maybe do some restructuring to help uh, move away from sort of that feeling that you're that question you're wondering about. But it really sort of I think it in, it also depends on you and like what like this song feels like it's in a show. Like it definitely feels like it's in a show. So like it to me if it is then like I think that you would probably won't end up having to do some structural work and some musical development. But if it isn't, then like there's something, you know, kind of charming the way it is. So I'm, I would say that like, that was kind of my response to it. I just felt a little torn because I don't know necessarily what direction you want to go with the song and, and in making it be this sort of personal uh thing or worth it standing alone. Um, I will just say right off the bat, again, it's really funny, clever lyrics. Hand career is so amazing. It's so, so, so <laughs> amazing. Um, uh, I did, I did have a question just I was curious. Is do weed and smoke alcohol like an intentional showing of the character's naivete or? No. Yeah, and uh, I wondered if smoke alcohol was a little too much, but people used to make fun because, well, I don't smoke, but I, I remember being like, "Oh, are y'all like doing weed?" And they're like, "You smoke weed, you don't." No, you don't I, do it. It, I think it's. I think it totally translated. I just want to make sure that it, it felt intentional. But I just want to make sure on that. I thought that was really that was cute. Um, so yeah. So the, my note was again with the caveat that I was a little torn because I don't know which direction I'm going to go with this and go with in terms of the song is um, is I thought like the choruses are like so catchy. Um, but it made me feel like I thought the verses could use some more musical development, particularly going from the intro to the verse. It almost felt like just one big section and not like two sections. And so then, and then verse two doesn't match verse one in terms of how it's structured, you know, musically. And so then it also made me feel like that chorus is so great that I want to, I want to come back. Like, it seemed like there's an opportunity to really come back to it earlier. Um, and so this is just total suggestion land. That's what we used to call it when I was in grad school, suggestion land. Um, that there could be some value in breaking up the first verse into two and, and sticking a chorus in there because the chorus is going to be the thing that you're constantly landing on and like she wants to do da, ba, ba. She wants, like she like she's going from the like scared nervous out, uptight you know whatever george girl blah 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 <laughs> to i'm going to do ba but like there's something about the going from that to that and that like that's really satisfying and so if we could set up a structure that tells us as the listener that we know that that's going to be happening and then we can always reliably get back to that chorus, that could be really exciting. But again, suggestion land. Um, it's just, but it's just such a fun character-based stream of consciousness. Um, you just wanna, you know, try to, if you can, give us a map of where we're going. I had mentioned earlier whether we're going from Michigan to California or Michigan to Chicago. 
And this feels like we're going from Georgia to Boston, you know? So like, if we're going from Georgia to Boston, like that's, that's those are two totally different uh, locales. And so there's a way that you, your structure can help us feel it. And I also thought like, again, this is, depends on whether you imagine this song could be in a show or something. It seemed like there's also opportunities to intersperse dialogue in it, which is another thing that if you wanted to keep it sort of in the AA-ish kind of format, that like the dialogue is something that can sort of set that off a bit. So, I mean, those are really my notes. I thought it was really, really funny and I really enjoyed listening to it. I don't have, I didn't have a whole ton to say about it. Did you have any questions about anything that I'd said or any thoughts or? Ooh, um... I don't think so. There are some parts where it's like, there's a lot of interlude of like him saying like one liners. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that's the extent of dialogue or should it be? And also I haven't really, I'd love to like orchestrate it and make it sound for a little sure. more. Um, sure, sure. But do you think there should be like, like a dialogue moment? Well, I don't, I don't know because I'm just saying that like it, the song has so much character in it that it, I could, feel the verses almost landing in a scene. Yeah. You know, or the chorus going into a scene. Like, I'm not saying that you have to go in that direction at all, but just the energy felt very alive and like, we're in a scene. We're about to, like, it's felt like musical comedy. Like, we're about to be in a, like, we're in a, it's just, that energy is just in it. Um, which is, again, not to say that it has to be that, but it's something if you're interested in exploring that, that could be, you know, a way of kind of beginning to look at the structure of the song again. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, of and course. Thanks everyone for their lovely, nice comments. <laughs> oh my goodness, Alyssa, thank you so much for sharing your hysterical song with us. And I think yeah. you have to go and write an entire musical for us now. Right. I think that <laughs> I think you have to go and you have to write the whole musical for this character now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> so excited to hear it. Um, so thank you so much. And we're going to say goodbye to Alyssa. Bye. <laughs> so moving on to our next student, I'm very excited to welcome Alejandro Rodriguez, who is a 2020 Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge winner and currently studying at Florida State University. Hello, Alejandro. Hello, hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Good. Okay, so if you don't mind introducing us to your song. All right, all right. So my song is titled A Change in the Narrative. Um, it's actually part of this musical that I'm sort of trying to maybe write. I don't know. Um, uh, the song is basically about a, a person who is, she. this person is Hispanic, and they kind of just, they're trying to, um, I'm gonna just to sort of give like the idea of like the character. So I based this character sort of off of a mix of me and my sister. This character's name is V. Um, and so this song is sort of her trying, her sort of like an inner monologue of her ex explaining her story and just saying, and just, uh, I, fully, I fully forgot how to speak, wow. Um, <laughs> You're perfect. You're doing incredible. It's it's her just tr just explaining that she, that she wants to excel in the career she's chosen. But of course, all this stuff is in the way and she doesn't know where to start because she's a woman, she's Hispanic. And so I wrote this song because I feel like someone who is trying to be a, not only a musical theater composer, but also a musical theater performer, I sort of am at a crossroads because I'm LGBT, I am um, Hispanic, I'm plus size. So I felt like this song was sort of a, a good way to help put some of my personal experiences into it. Amazing. So I'm so excited for everyone to hear a change in the narrative. <laughs> Who 
who's like me, a society that looks down on me. That's humanity. Living in a city, trying to make ends meet, working two jobs, struggling to chase my dream. That's my reality. raised to be bright but when you're 12 and surrounded by carbon copies of the same old folks it just seems more wrong than right now i'm older not much wiser and i work twice as hard to get by so can i really rise in a world that's changing This big old city full of hopes and dreams Waiting to be shattered and teared by men of filth and greed Is this life really for me? Absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. So, so, so beautiful. Thank you. Um, is there anything that you want, like have questions about or, or, or how do you want your feedback? Is there is there anything that you want to say before we get into it? Um, yes, 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 a lot. <laughs> because, um, well, for starters, I don't consider myself to be the best lyricist because um, I'm very picky as to how I want just sort of the piece to sound writing wise. Mm -hmm. um, also, most of the stuff that I've written has been quite long. I've never written something in like a span of like three minutes. So I think one of the hardest things was sort of trying to fit the lyrics and have it all make sense in a short, a short amount of time. So I, th I think sort of like my question would be how to um, sort of get across a message and sort of a story in that short amount of time. Okay, great. That's that's a good way, place to start. So I would say one thing that I, the thing that I really jumped out at me about this song is that it has a kind of it's almost like an aria. It's like a pop aria. Yeah. In it would and so like as a result of that, there's not like rigid verses and choruses. You know, it's like it it kind of is its own little stream of consciousness uh, uh, structure. And I actually think that there's ways to work within that because the music is so sophisticated um, that what I would advise you to do if you were gonna approach a rewrite on this is to think about the hook. And right now the hook is a change in narrative Although we're the musically really my ear is pricking at I, I want, 
Yeah. <laughs> and so I for my money, um, a change in narrative is not necessarily doing the work that you necessarily would want it to do, I don't think. Yeah. But but like the music is so strong underneath it. And so I guess I would the advice I would give you is to think about the specifics. Um, I think that when you're in and doubt, be specific. And so what is the change in narrative? Like what is the narrative? And then th therefore, what is the change in narrative? Um, and I think that like, if you're able to sort of really underline that and actually just literally say it, that like that will be one of your keys to to the the information that you want to have in the song so like for example uh there's this line i was raised to be bright but when you're 12 and surrounded by carbon copies of the same folks it just seems more wrong than right so that was like a place where i felt um this is a note that i gave to one of the other writers this evening was like you could be even more descriptive of what those carbon yeah. copies of the same old folks are what they do what they look like what they dress like um, and you have the space to say whatever you want because, it, again, it has this aria quality to it. Um, and you know how the music works, so you can, like, expand or contract or release that however you like. Um, uh, and that's, and really, because really the words, the lyrics here are riding on your musical structure, which is, as I mentioned, like, quite sophisticated. Um, and any chorus that starts with I want, especially in the theater piece, is always going to be great. But it also means that you have to be willing to say what I want, which again takes us back to the change in narrative. Yeah. So like, once you decide what that actually is and can be specific about it, I think you're going to really have a super powerful chorus. Um, because it's going to be specific. It's going to like just lay it out on the line because the music is like, it's like right there at the heartbeat, you know, of this character, like the way they're expressing it. It's like very, very emotional. Um, and then someone put, oh yes, melodic line, like yes, the melodic lines throughout this are fantastic. Um, and, but yeah, so this is my notes. I, I said, uh, what is the narrative and what is the change of that that, that character wants? The music has an intense, romantic, passionate quality to it that can really help the narrative and the change and its change crest and fall. Um, do you have any questions about any of that or, um, or anything that you're thinking that resonate with you or not resonate with you or? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Not really. I think you could you you, you you clarified it very well. <laughs> yeah, I think like just think about the change, what the narrative is, mm -hmm. and then what is the change, to and then say it. Yeah, <laughs> like just like that's and that's part of another part of the key to writing, uh, personal writing, is just say the thing, like whatever it is. Um, but that's, again, you have to decide for yourself how much do you want to reveal. All right. <laughs> and, like, so you mentioned earlier about being, you know, Latinx, plus size, et cetera, um, LGBT. Um, perhaps there's something in that. Although I, this is about a female character. Yeah. So that's a different story. But, but you know what I mean? Well, whatever she's, what's her, what's her narrative and what she's going to change it to? And just mm. be specific. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, you're muted, Jenny. I was muted. Okay. And <laughs> I my mind is blown. I was just saying it seems like you're a little mind blown, Alejandro. <laughs> was this did it Definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, this your song is so gorgeous and thank it's you so much beautiful. for sharing it with all of us. Nice. Thank you for letting me share it. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I'm so excited to see how it grows. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. It's been great. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being with us. And I'm going to say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Amazing. And then we have one last student participant. 
Um, Breezy Love, she is a 2019 Musical Theater Songwriting Challenge winner and currently studying at Berkeley College of Music. Hi, Breezy. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Doing well, thank you. So please introduce us to your song. My song is called Road Like That and it's a really personal one. I wrote it about someone I'm really close to who had a suicide attempt the year back and it completely blindsided me and everyone else in my life as well as their life. None of us knew that they were struggling and I couldn't even uh, address it in my own life. I was having a hard time just wrapping my head around that situation. And um, I was at boarding school at the time. I finally got home and it just kind of wrote itself sort of. It was one of those writing experiences. And yeah, I thought it was a good one to show Michael because it's definitely really personal and I would love to put it in a musical one day. Amazing. Well, I'm very excited for everyone to hear a road like that.
you safe But I can try Breezy, that was just absolutely wonderful. Thank you. That means a just lot to me. So, so, so beautiful. Um, and I want to, you know, uh, before we talk about the song, I just want to like uh, honor the experience, um, you know, because that's a tough one to, you know, to go through. And so, I just want to make sure that the feedback I'm giving you is um, useful to you in terms of like just managing that experience. Um, so, you know, I just want to just put that into the air. Absolutely. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. So do you have any, is there anything that you are wondering about or thinking about with this song that you want me to know or that you want to, I have questions about. Honestly, I'm interested in knowing your brutal, honest thoughts about it, um, how I could make it better, whatever you're thinking. Okay, sure. Um, so I just want to start off by saying, like, those are killer opening lines. That's, those four lines are just so great. Oops. Oops, sorry. That's my guitar. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so, like, uh, it's good to know that... Um, you maybe are thinking about putting this in a show because that sort of influences some of what I'm thinking. Um, uh, Cause I said that I really love this first, this um, first opening lines. I was torn though, because part of me kind of almost wished that the two verses were switched. But again, that's like dependent upon like, if it were in, a, if it were in something and like what the context around it would be. Um, but those first four lines are so, so, so great. My big question for you is actually about the hook itself. Okay. Um, a road like that, I don't know, I don't totally know what it means in relationship to the verses. And I think that's because it ultimately is about whatever happened. Like the road like that seems to be the, uh, the event of whatever, I mean, I'm just extrapolating, like, you know, in the show, it could be anything. It could be in a reference to a suicide attempt. It could be in reference to drugs. It could be in, it, there's, it's right now, it's just that hook for me is a little vague. Mm -hmm. And I, and also because of the way that it's set, where the way it's set musically, I keep expecting the line before it to rhyme, which would help. And also, because the vulnerability of the music and the lines that precede it, like you, I feel like it would be a little bit more satisfying to me if like the, the, the vulnerability and the, whatever the, the road like that, whatever the thing is, cause that's like just the X factor is right there. Whatever the thing is that the character is talking about is right there in that line. I see and, what you're saying. And, and like right now, that line right now is a little bit anonymous. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's where your, your like emotional payoff is landing in this anonymous place when it really wants to ex it open up. Like that's where like, that's like those songs, those, gu those guitar songs that are so kind of like spare and picky. Like they, they set you up in that first verse. And then you're like, oh my God. And then you're on to the second verse. And then you're into the, you know, the the bridge. And you know what I mean? But you have to let us in with what your hook is. I like totally with, get that. Yeah. With, with whatever the information is. Um, and that's like, to be honest, like the, the the biggest note I have to you, I do, I do think that as a result of that, it it makes your B section a little tread water a bit because we don't know I don't know what the thing is but there but the emotion but the musical emotion is right there is like the music is like doing so much incredible work all the way through the end including when you go up a re up in your register um toward the end and the, the emotion is there but it's just right now you're not saying what the thing is and that's gonna be what's the personal is going to really bring us in. 
Um, but you, of course, have to decide how much you want to say. Mm-hmm. And like, and and you know, if you want to say the thing, if you want to fictionalize the experience from your from the experience of which you wrote the song, or, or make it something else. But I do think, regardless, that line, the hook there is kind of has to either it has to say it itself, or like the song has to tell us what it means. Okay. You know, like, uh, but that so that those are really my my uh my notes on it it's just it's it's stunning it's like really really stunning beautiful music and emotional and it's a personal song <laughs> yeah for sure and so so i'd say great fantastic fantastic work on that thank you so much yeah would you mind if i asked you a couple oh, questions yes, please, please, please. about um not exactly relating to this song, but I was just wondering about your practice as far as your practice schedule as a songwriter and a musician. What does that look like? Um, You're a working professional in this industry that I would love to be a part of as well. How do you make that work in your daily life? Well, it's changed a bunch over the years because, you know, I'm not working a day job anymore. Um, Writing now is my day job, I guess. Uh, Well, it's more, it's more than a day job, but it's my passion. But uh, when I was having to do lots of other responsibilities, it it tended to be my 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 practice tended to be oriented around deadlines. So like if I knew I had like a reading coming up or a concert I had to do or whatever, that would be the like the ticking clock in my life that I had to figure out where I could squeeze in the time to do the writing that would then meet the deadline. And to some extent that is still true for me, but I just, I have a lot more time that I can sort of structure myself and I, and, but I'm not, but now I also have like a lot more deadlines too, but I also, I'm, and I'm, I'm very transparent about this. I procrastinate all the time. Procrastination is like an extremely important part of my writing process because it gives me time to to let my brain sort of figure things out. Yeah. Even if I'm doing doing other things. So but like there are but there are some people, I'm not one of them, who are like, I write for 15 minutes a day, every day, you know, and they do that and and that works for a lot of folks. That doesn't tend to be me. Um, I feel like if you because your work kind of what you just played it kind of reminds me of um, my friend Ben Sawyer, who, if you don't know his work, I recommend you check him out. Ben he, um, Sawyer. Ben Sawyer, S-C-H-E-U-E-R. He's a spectacular, spectacular songwriter. He write, he wrote a show called The Lion that was about his um, a personal show about his bout with uh, cancer. Oh, wow. And he's, he's, he, he's all, his, He's, I just think he's someone that you should check out. I mean, I will. Obviously, a lot of other people, but um, I just, when you I heard you playing, it reminded me of him a little bit and just the vulnerability um, and the, just the way that you write. Uh, but so my practice is, you know, tends to be tied to a deadline. But, and then once that happens, I am very good at sort of self directing and like, identifying what needs to be done in order to hit the deadline. That's really helpful. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. And thank you for such great work. Really, really beautiful. Well, thank you for your feedback and for your time. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, Breezy. Breezy, thank you so much for sharing your vulnerability and your beautiful song with all of us. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. And now we say goodbye. Hi, Breezy. Thank you. Um, So those were our four incredible students. I think they were all amazing. Congratulations to all the participants. And Michael, your feedback was so stunning. I feel like we've learned so much. Oh, thank you. (laughs) So much. And I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know you have another event to go to. Yeah, it's fine. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, it's fine. (laughs) <laughs> okay, great. Well, if it's fine, if anyone has a question that they would like to ask Michael right now, please put it in the comments. We have maybe two more minutes. Um, I will ask 
one question that I wanted to ask you. Um, so I know it's been a very hard and difficult past year. And I was wondering if there are any lessons that you're taking from that year and using it in your future approach to projects moving forward. Yeah, so it has been a difficult year, obviously, for a lot of reasons. But I, the lesson that I'm taking from this year, especially as a theater person and an artist, is that time is very precious. Mm -hmm. And both in terms of how much of it we have to spend making art, but also how much time we, other people have to consume the art that we make for them or, mm -hmm. or in hopes that they will come see it or listen to it or whatever. And so the big lesson I've taken from it here is to not waste anyone's time. Mm -hmm. To make sure that whatever I'm doing artistically is worth coming to see. And that's going to be a totally subjective thing, mm -hmm. but I'm also very, I want to really make sure that whatever I'm working on is, is what I mean. And, mm -hmm. and I'm saying what I mean and I mean what I say, and that if you're going to come and spend your money and spend your time in the theater with, with my work that I'm going to really not be, you know, messing around. Yes, that make it count and being make honest, yeah. which is so beautiful a thing that we've heard with everyone tonight about honesty and specificity in work. Yeah. Um, so we have one question from our commenters. Um, Michael, how do you approach writing a strange loop from a mental health perspective? How did you keep yourself safe? Were there songs you ended up not putting in from what name 22? Thank you, what name? Yeah, so for me, and this, I'm not, I'm not like everyone else. <laughs> I mean, no one is, but I, I can't look at, I couldn't look at a strange loop as, um, I didn't, I didn't need to protect my mental health necessarily mm -hmm. because once I like figured out what the show was about, there was, I was able to have like a distance from it. Mm -hmm. And it just became, it became more of an artistic uh, endeavor than like a personal one. I mean, the personal was inextricably a part of it. Right. But like I had to find the distance because otherwise mm -hmm. I wouldn't really be able to write it. And so right. I guess I would say that if you don't have the distance from a personal piece, you, I'm not going to say you shouldn't be writing it, but you should just be aware that you mm -hmm. don't have the distance and that it might be difficult for you to do the work that you need to do artistically because artistic work can be therapeutic, mm -hmm. but I don't believe that it is therapy. Right. It, has therapeutic, it has therapeutic <laughs> qualities. And mm -hmm. certainly there were therapeutic qualities that a strange group helped me through in my own life, mm -hmm. but I had to actually go to therapy. Yes, as we <laughs> all should. We should all be in therapy. Everyone, Another everyone should, yeah, that's totally. Um, Another takeaway from our masterclass series is everyone should please sign up for therapy. You'll yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> right. And like, or you might not, but it might still yeah. be useful to you. Um, yeah. And so I approached the Strange Loop as a piece of art that I, that I really wanted to share with people. And so the more I focused on the art, and made it better and made it better and rewrote it and all of that and worked with collaborators and got feedback and all of that, the better my mental health was because I yes. was doing the thing that I wanted to do and yes. and trying to make it, you know, something that was worth an audience's time. Well, that's beautiful. And thank you for sharing so much with us tonight, this masterclass. I hope that everyone who's in the comments is going to go home and write a new original song from personal experience. Excited yes, to hear all of them, please. Um, and Michael, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here with us in the American Theater Wing. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. So for anyone who is watching right now, we have another masterclass. It's called Singing for Non-Singers with the fabulous vocal coach, Liz Kaplan, on Tuesday, July 13th at 6 p.m. ET. 
So just make sure that you're subscribed to our channel so that you don't miss a masterclass. And everyone have a beautiful rest of your evening. Goodbye.